This is a quick tutorial on how to install a TransferFlow 58-gallon midship replacement tank for a 2020-2022 Ford F-250 and F-350. You will need the following tools for installation. Before beginning installation, verify all parts listed below are included in the installation kit. To begin, park the vehicle in the desired location and engage the parking brake. Turn the key to the off position. Next, release the fuel system pressure. Disconnect the fuel pump control module electrical connector located above the exhaust muffler attached to the frame crossmember. Start the engine and allow it to idle until it stalls. After the engine stalls, crank the engine for approximately 5 seconds to ensure that the fuel rail pressure has been released. Disconnect the primary battery located at the front passenger side of the engine compartment. Loosen and remove the negative terminal connector. Then remove positive terminal connector. If available, disconnect the secondary battery located at the front driver side of the engine compartment. Loosen and remove the negative terminal connector. Then remove positive terminal connector. If equipped, remove the fuel tank skid plate and set aside the skid plate bolts. Some will be reused later. Disconnect the fuel and purge line connectors located at the front of the fuel tank. Some fuel may spray or leak out of the fuel line. Disconnect the two quick connect fittings on the vapor canister located to the rear of the fuel tank. Disconnect the vapor blocking valve electrical connector located at the top rear of the fuel tank. Loosen the gear clamp securing the rubber fuel fill tube to the steel fill neck. The gear clamp is located above the driver side frame rail below the fuel fill door. Access the fill neck tubes through the front of the driver side rear wheel well. Leave the gear clamp on the steel fill neck as it will be reused when installing the new fuel tank. Support the fuel tank using a pneumatic or hydraulic jack. Set aside the longer of the two inner rear strap bolts. It will be reused later when installing the new tank. Use hand tools only. An impact gun will damage the clip nuts that secure the tank straps to the frame. Lower the fuel tank about 8 to 10 inches, or just enough to have access to the top of the fuel tank and sending unit. Disconnect the sending unit and pressure sensor connectors. Lowering the tank too much will damage the electrical connectors if they are not disconnected from the sending unit and pressure sensor. Disconnect the fill neck vent line quick connect fitting located to the rear of the sending unit. This can be accessed from the drive shaft side of the tank or through the space between the driver's side frame rail rear and truck bed next to the fill neck tubing. With the tank slightly lowered, cut the zip tie that connects the fill hose and vent line. The vent line will remain attached to the truck while the fill hose will be removed with the tank. After checking that all electrical, fuel, and vapor connections are disconnected, lower and remove the OEM fuel tank. Remove the fuel sending unit from the OEM fuel tank. Remove the three nuts and sending unit cover using a 10 millimeter socket. Disconnect the quick connect fitting attached to the top of the sending unit. Some fuel may spill out of this connector. Remove the locking ring with SST310-123, if available, or by using a large flathead screwdriver or pry bar and mallet. Turn the ring counterclockwise until it unlocks. Lift the sending unit up and slowly tip to allow fuel to drain. Then remove the sending unit from the tank while ensuring not to bend the float wire. Remove the vapor blocking valve from the OEM tank by disconnecting the quick connect fitting located at the top rear of the tank. This will be reused on the new fuel tank. Unclip the three plastic tube clips along the driver's side frame rail next to the transfer case. Disconnect the two quick connect fittings at the front of the tubes. Remove the fuel line and purge line from the plastic clips. Some fuel may drip from the tube. Remove the rear plastic clip located under the frame crossmember. Locate the emissions canister bracket in the installation kit. Bend the rectangular tabs up to a 90 degree angle, making sure to not break the tab off. Hold the canister bracket up in the mounting location between the two bed stiffener cross sections. The hand bent tabs will locate the bracket by inserting into two slots in the bed stiffener cross sections. While holding the bracket in place, mark the six holes on the cross sections using the bracket as a template. Drill one quarter inch pilot holes on each of the six markings. Make sure to only drill through the cross section and not the bed. 
check that each mark is centered on the cross-section before drilling and verify the hole locations by holding the bracket in place again. Use a step drill bit to enlarge the two outer pilot holes on the front cross-section and two outer pilot holes on the rear cross-section to one half inch. Use a step drill bit to enlarge the inner pilot hole on the front cross-section and inner pilot hole on the rear cross-section, passenger side, to three-quarter inch. Insert the provided M8 clip nuts into the three-quarter inch holes, passenger side, and three-quarter inch OEM slots, driver side, and make sure that each nut seats into the half-inch holes. Break off the two rectangular tabs and four slotted tabs from the canister bracket using a screwdriver and or pliers. Install the canister bracket using the four provided M8 bolts. Center the bracket in the mounting slots and tighten the bolts. Remove the provided add-on canister from the packaging. Remove and discard the metal bracket from the canister. Retain the M5 bolt to mount the canister to the new bracket. Install the two provided quarter 20 bolts into the rear slots of the canister bracket. Install the OEM N5 canister bolt into the front slot of the canister bracket. Mount the canister to the bracket using the OEM hardware, front, and provided quarter 20 bolts, rear. Do not fully tighten the hardware at this time. Allow the canister to slide front and back while connecting the emissions hoses. Install the OEM sending unit into the replacement tank. Loosen and remove the six bolts securing the sending unit cover plate. Remove the sender plate cover and discard. The ring and hardware will be reused. Using a pair of wire cutters, snip roughly 1 8 inch off each corner of the locating tab of the OEM sending unit. Cut the corner at approximately 45 degrees. Check that the green O-ring is installed properly in the sending unit tank ring. Insert the sending unit into the replacement tank and line up the locating tab with the notch on the sending unit tank ring. Carefully guide the float wire into the tank first, making sure not to bend the wire. While holding the sending unit down against the green O-ring, install the sender ring and six bolts. Torque the bolts per IS-484 in a star pattern to seal the ring evenly. Using a multimeter, attach the wire clamps to the two pins on the left of the sending unit plug. Set the multimeter to the resistance setting. The sending unit should read 180 to 184 ohms when installed in the empty tank. Install the fuel line adapter, A8, by inserting a 90-degree quick connect fitting onto the fuel supply port on top of the sending unit. Seal the fuel supply port on the sending unit, fill neck vent, brass fitting, fill neck tube, and the steel vapor line. Connect the air supply to the brass vent port using a quick connect fitting or by inserting a rubber hose over the fitting. Do not pressure test through the fill neck. Pressurize the tank to 1 to 3 PSI max and use a soapy water solution to thoroughly check for leaks around all valves, the sending unit, sealing surfaces, and connection points. If any leaks are present, reseal the affected area and retest the system. Using the provided 5 8 inch P-clamp and M6 flange nut, install the rear vapor line, A7, on the replacement tank, fasten one flange nut onto the weld stud, then install the P-clamp, followed by another flange nut. Tighten the flange nuts per specifications listed in IS-484. Install the purge line adapter assembly, A4, using the supplied flange nuts and tube clamp. Fasten one flange nut onto the weld stud, then install the P-clamp, followed by another flange nut. Install the purge, A3, and fuel supply, A2, lines at the front of the replacement tank by inserting the straight quick connect fittings onto the steel tank tubes. Install the OEM vapor blocking valve by inserting the male end into the rear vapor line. Remove the red cap and install the OEM rubber fill tube onto the replacement tank. Note the orientation of the fill tube on the OEM tank. Using the painted lines on the fill tube, match the orientation of the tube on the replacement tank. The painted line should be at the top of the tube when installed. Tighten the hose clamp per IS-484. 
Install the TFI front driver side tank strap spacer with the M8 bolts from the skid plate. The supplied hardware will be used to connect the strap bracket to the front strap. Remove the OEM bolt located to the front of the rear driver side wheel. Install the transfer flow rear driver side tank strap bracket with the OEM hardware. Install the front steel fuel line along the driver side frame rail next to the transfer case or transmission. Press the tube into the two plastic tube clips top slot that are attached to the driver side frame rail. Insert the male end of the fuel line into the OEM quick connect, making sure that the tube is fully inserted and the locking clip on the fitting is closed properly. Install the front steel purge line along the driver side frame rail next to the transfer case or transmission. Press the tube into the two plastic tube clips, bottom slot, that are attached to the driver side frame rail. Close the tab on the two plastic tube clips. Install the front plastic purge line to connect the front steel purge line and OEM purge line located to the front of the transfer case and above the front prop shaft. Remove the male fitting from the fill neck vent by cutting the rubber hose with hose cutters. Cut as close to the fitting as possible. Replace the male fitting with the provided female quick connect fitting and hose clamp. Tighten the hose clamp per IS-484. Place the fuel tank on a pneumatic or hydraulic jack and raise the tank until it is about 12 inches from the final position. Guide the rubber fill hose around the frame rail so it does not get caught on other components. Plug in the sending unit and pressure sensor electrical connections. Do not lower the tank with these connectors plugged in as it can break the connector. Raise the tank until it meets the frame cross members. Locate the tank with the tab on the top rear of the tank. The tab must fit into the slot on the rear cross member. Install the front strap using the provided hardware. Connect the front strap to the strap bracket and fasten together with two nuts and two bolts. Install the rear strap using the supplied short bolt and OEM long bolt. The long 15mm bolt will be reused from the OEM system. Torque the hardware per the specifications listed in IS-484. Connect the long purge line adapter hose assembly, A4, to the bottom port of the add-on canister. Some adjustment to the canister position may be needed. Slide the canister along the length of the slots on the canister bracket to connect the purge line adapter. Connect the vapor blocking valve corrugated tube to the top quick connect port of the add-on canister. Connect the 90 degree quick connect of the canister adapter assembly to the bottom quick connect port on the OEM vapor canister. Connect the canister adapter tube assembly, A6, rubber line to the add-on canister and insert the 90 degree quick connect fitting to the 5 8 inch port on the OEM canister. Tighten the clamp on the rubber hose. Plug in the vapor blocking valve electrical connector at the top rear of the tank. Once all the emissions lines are connected, tighten the previously installed mounting hardware. Fasten the canister mounting hardware, two TFI quarter 20 bolts, and one OEM M5 bolt to secure the add-on canister to the bracket. Connect the front fuel and purge line adapters to the steel lines along the driver's side frame rail at the front of the tank. Connect the fill neck vent line to the brass male quick connect fitting. This can be accessed through the front of the driver's side rear wheel well and between the frame and bed. Connect the fuel fill tube to the steel filler neck and secure with the OEM gear clamp. Tighten the gear clamp per IS-484. Make sure all the fuel, fill, vent lines and electrical wires are not kinked or pinched close to any heat source or in contact with any sharp or moving objects. Confirm that the vent line has a continuous downward slope from the filler neck to the tank. Reconnect the vehicle's battery and secondary battery if used. Prime the fuel pump. Reconnect the fuel pump control module electrical connector located above the exhaust muffler. The module is attached on the top side of the frame cross member. Cycle the ignition key to ignition on, engine off, and wait three seconds to prime the fuel pump. Check for fuel leaks under the vehicle before starting the engine. 
Apply the CARB EO label to the underside of the hood per Supplemental Instruction Sheet IS-946. Complete final installation checklist below. Congratulations on a successful installation! For more information about any of our premier American-made fuel systems, call TransferFlow at 1-800-442-0056 or visit us online at transferflow.com.